And whenever I could have this kind of dream, I could feel like I need to continue. Oh. Yeah, my body was always hot, very hot. So I felt like, okay, I need to continue. And that's how I started masturbating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's when I started masturbation. And this thing continued. Even on the road when I was walking, I could feel like I need to hide somewhere and do it. Oh, was it, it was really, really bad because I could do it like six times a day. Growing up, Ruth Midundo struggled so much with rejection, she often preferred staying alone. At some point, she hated men. And today she shares her story of her struggles, even with rejection, with her own mother. And today, in as much as the relationship is still strained, she hopes to raise her daughter in a different way. Welcome to today's episode of Candid with Yvonne. My name is Yvonne Kawira, and this is Ruth's story. Uh, my name is Ruth Medundo. I'm from Kisumu, Sia County, mm -hmm. a place called Uyoma. Mm -hmm. Yes. Among all your siblings, your number? I'm number two, mm -hmm. the first girl. Oh, wow. Yes. How many are you? How many we are six. Uh, yeah. Okay. My dad was a polygamous. He had two wives. Mm -hmm. So my mom is the second wife. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. How's life growing up, especially in, in a polygamous marriage? Uh, must have been a story there. Yeah, it wasn't easy actually. Mm -hmm. It wasn't easy. My mom uh, told told us a story that before she gave birth to me, there were a lot of problems in the family. She couldn't keep a child. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she couldn't keep any child. Her children used to die. By the time they're turning one year, they could just collapse and die. Mm -hmm. So, dad was working in Nairobi and were back in the village. Her in-laws got mad at her and they were chasing her after she buried the third one. Really? Yes, they were chasing her away, asking her to leave. Mm -hmm. So, it's one in-law stood by her and begged the whole family to at least to let her stay or let the husband come back and chase her by himself. Mm -hmm. So they were like, no, she have to leave. So this in-law took my mom, brought her to Nairobi mm -hmm. to see the dad. And when they came, dad was at work. So in the evening, dad came and was, he was like, oh, surprise, you guys are here. Mm -hmm. And then he was walking around asking like, oh, where's the ching, where's the ching, where's the kid? And they started crying and they told him that we lost him. He died. Mm. So by the time they were coming, grandmother wrote a letter that this woman must be chased. She's rotten. She can't keep kids. She's a witch. Yeah. Why are the kids dying? The whole family. This We have a big clan. Why is it that she's the only woman who cannot keep children? Mm. So dad was also mad. At you? Yes. And he was like, you have to go. So this same, same brother-in-law begged the brother, please let us stay. Let us give her the last chance mm -hmm. to stay. And dad listened to him. They were very close. So she stayed. And then after a few months, she conceived with me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they wrote a letter back home that, ah, she's pregnant. So people are not surprised. They were like, ah, she's always pregnant. The pregnancy is growing. She gave birth to a very beautiful girl mm -hmm. that she's always giving birth. What is that? Mm -hmm. So they stayed. So after a few months, like maybe nine, we went to the village. So everyone was like waiting to see, to see me dying. Of course. Yes. And I survived. Mm -hmm. Yes. Ah. So I survived. And several others came after you? Yes. Mm -hmm. After two years. Mm -hmm. She got pregnant again. So when I started going to school, life was okay. I was very bright in class. I was ever number one. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Everyone was like, ah, that number is for Ruth. We can't take from her. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So up to class five. Mm -hmm. When I reached to class five, I can't tell about what happened. Yeah. Between me and my mom. Changed. She changed. She changed. All of a sudden, mm -hmm. and she started hating me, mistreating me. Yeah, dad was still here, and we were in the village with the other woman and her and the other siblings. She could just mistreat me. 
Sometimes I could run to go to the stepmom, like, mommy doesn't want me, please stay, let me stay here. When I go there, she pulls me back. This is not your house. She's not your mother. So they could also fight, like, mm. why are you mistreating this kid? She couldn't understand herself. I could even run to my grandmother. She could follow me there, telling me that this is my mother's house. You cannot stay here. And my grandmother's like, oh, she's also my daughter. She's my grandchild and she's my daughter. I can stay with her. She's like, she was like, no. And in 2000, mm -hmm. in 2000, in 1999, the first wife died. And in 2000, mm -hmm. dad followed her. So you were left to the world. Yes. So when my dad died, things were still tough. Yeah. I could only be happy when dad was in the village. But when he comes back to Nairobi, I could face problems. So when he died, mm -hmm. that was the time I washed my hands and I said that, okay, I'm done. Like, I cannot stay here anymore. I have to go. Yeah. So I could go back to my grandmother. She follows me. Any relative, I could go to any relative. She would still follow me. Then I decided to go to a place where people don't know me. Mm -hmm. I was in class 7. I was 13 years. Yes. I went up to Mombasa. Mm -hmm. So when I reached there, I didn't know anyone actually. So I started like, okay, please host me. But Strangers. I need to, yes, but I need to go to school. Let me stay. So everyone would ask me like, okay, where's your mom? That's the first question. Where's your mom? I can say that I killed my mom. So many times because I would say my mom died. My mom is dead. Mm. I'm an orphan. I don't have a father. I don't have a mother. Everyone, anyone who could ask me, I would tell them, okay, I don't have a mother. So everyone was like, no, you're a stranger. Yeah. Kuna majini uku. We don't know where you came from. Mm. You don't have a relative here that, no, how did you start? I'm and I never, yes, I never wanted to share my story. I never wanted to talk about it. I would start crying and then I said to myself, okay, why can't I be a house girl? Maybe I can get a place. So I became a house girl mm -hmm. and I could talk to them to allow me to go to school. So there's a lady who agreed and she told me that when you stay in my house, you want to go to school, you can't go the whole day. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can join Gumbaru and go to school. Mm -hmm. Adult education, mm -hmm. is that fine by you? Then I said, it's okay, fine. And I did my KCPE. Wow. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I came back home. I went back to Kizumu. I thought my mom would at least take me to school. Yeah. No high school. Yes. She didn't do anything. She accepted you. She didn't ask you where you've been. Or she only asked me like, where have you been? Mm -hmm. You. What is wrong with you? Where have you been? I told that I was in Mombasa. Then she just kept quiet. She was not even excited or even pray like, God, you brought her home. I didn't know where she was for like our year and a half. No. But my siblings were happy to see me. Mm -hmm. So since I'm close to my grandmother, I just went to my grandmother and I told my grandmother that, Mommy, I want to go to school. I passed. So I came to Mommy to at least pay school fees mm -hmm. for me. But she just kept quiet. I stayed there for a few months, yeah. Then went back to Mombasa and continued that life. Yeah, yes. So I was taking myself to school, mm -hmm. to the Gumbaru, yeah. In 2005, I came back to Nairobi. I stayed with my cousins for a while. Mm -hmm. And then in 2006, I had friends from South Sudan. Mm -hmm. And we organized and they took me to South Sudan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when I reached there, I started working. As a what? As a waitress. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because there were no houses. So at least when you work in a hotel, mm -hmm. they can host you mm -hmm. and give you food. Yeah. And it was not safe yet. Mm -hmm. The security was really, really bad. Mm -hmm. So when I was working there, people could harass me. Yeah, mm -hmm. want okay. you by it, want to carry you by force, you know, they Do were like tough. South yes, mm -hmm. South Sudanese men. So I met this guy and I had to force myself to date him. 
for my security because when they know that you're dating a south sudanese you're safe uh -huh. but when they know that you're dating a fellow kenyan or any foreigner you'll be in trouble mm -hmm. so i started dating him how old were you at this time i was 21 yes and he's my baby daddy mm -hmm. my daughter's father so i could come home often just to visit my family go back in 2009 i conceived mm -hmm and came home to start life here i gave birth to my daughter and the time i was pregnant the guy became irresponsible were you living together that time no we're not living together actually but mm -hmm. we could see each other okay. every now every day yeah he could come to my place yeah. at the time i conceived i became sick i couldn't stay there the place is very hot mm -hmm. yeah and i was sleeping a lot and i couldn't work anymore so i came to nairobi and his father called me he just told his father that i have a lady who is pregnant mm -hmm. with my child because that time i was threatening him like okay if you're not responsible just do abortion oh, no. yeah because i have nowhere to go mm -hmm. my mom cannot take care of me i don't have a job i was not telling him everything but mm -hmm. in my heart i was saying okay where am i going to start from i don't have a job i don't have it's money and i'm pregnant you know so i was telling him that okay i'm going to do an abortion and come back to my work because I was living well before this happened, before this happened. Mm. and he told the dad so the dad called me and begged me not to abort and he promised to help me so he was helping me little by little mm. until the time I gave birth to my daughter when she turned six months I took her to Sudan to see the grandfather mm -hmm. and from there he gave me some money to start a life with so this money when he gave it to me i constructed a house wow. in my father's compound it was a uh, 1300 dollar so it was 2400 dollar when i changed the money it was 130000 uh -huh. yes so my dad had a house in jericho mm -hmm. so i went and constructed my house in the compound that's where i stayed for some some years in 2014 I used to go back to Sudan to hustle because when my daughter turned one year old, this father-in-law abandoned me. So remember, like my mother was having children when whenever they could turn one year, they were dying. And exactly what happened with my daughter when she turned one year old, father-in-law abandoned me. He stopped helping me totally. Mm -hmm. So Are I was communicating with now with the daddy at this point. He wasn't talking. Whenever I could call him, he was telling me that, oh, daddy will do for you, oh, daddy say, oh, daddy, so I got tired. Yeah, exactly. Yes, and I stopped calling him. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, this museum at least has helped me. Yeah, yeah I'm so grateful. Mm -hmm. I could go back to Sudan and work and come back after every two weeks because I'm not used to leave her. She's little, mm -hmm. just one year old. Who would you leave her with? Back? A house girl. A house girl. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the way I lived my life. My family never cared about me. My own siblings never cared about me. My mother turned them against me. Yeah. The time I was working, I was helping. But then later they were like, she's stingy. She doesn't want to help. And I had no money to support them. Mm -hmm. So when I went back to Sudan in 2014, a friend came from China. And she, she was telling her that, you girls, go to China. You know, life in China is better than here. And they were not interested. And she was like, okay, Ruth, why can't you go? Mm -hmm. So I was interested. And I started asking, okay, how much? She told me the amount, like one third is enough. And I managed to raise the money. Mm -hmm. And I went to China. So I could leave my daughter with the house girl and go to China. Mm -hmm. But my daughter was never okay. I could leave her with the house girls. And they were really mistreating her. So even a neighbor could send me a message that you know, you know that your daughter is really suffering. She's really suffering. Why can't you come back? So imagine I used to go, come, go, come. And every time I could tell my friends, I'm going to Kenya. They're like, okay, what are you going to do? My daughter, every time my daughter. A friend asked me, one friend asked me that you, all the time you're just working for your ticket alone. And whenever you're going home, you're not going for anything. It's just your daughter. I was just shedding tears because they don't know my story. They knew nothing about me. So we stayed like that. And then now, now 2016, I just prayed 
I gave my life to Christ and I told God, please help me get something to do. I want to stay with my daughter, like other women. I want to take care of my daughter. I want to stay home. I don't want to move. So the Lord started using me in 2016. I released my first album. Nice. Yes. And at the same time, when I was praying, I told God, okay, I need a husband. When I have a husband back home, mm -hmm. I won't be going. Every I will time. stay with my yeah. family, okay? And I will raise my daughter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I miss staying her. She's going without me. So then later, after a few months, I had a friend from, we were staying together in China. Mm -hmm. That time she was here. She started sending me a message that, hey Ruth, you know, I got you a husband. Oh. And I'm like, okay, did I tell you that I'm looking for one? <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, you know, you know, there's a guy mm -hmm. who's looking for a wife. And he's your tribe. Oh. She's your tribe mate. Mm -hmm. And he's staying in Europe. So I want you to meet the person. I want to connect you guys and talk, you know. I already told him about you, so don't let me down. And then he said, I said, no. Me, I never like my tribe mates. I don't want a little guy. Mm -hmm. She was laughing like, stop joking. You know, you like jokes. Mm -hmm. Just accept him, please. Then I told her, okay, I'll just talk to him because of you, but I don't want anything. So you did not have any expectations when you were talking? Yes. Mm -hmm. So when I started talking to this person, it was around August. And we agreed to meet back home in in December. Same yes. Mm -hmm. So I was coming home for vacation and we met. The guy came home on 22nd December. And he had told me earlier that, okay, we are not going to go to, go to Kisumu first to meet my family. We'll stay in Kisumu for a week. So when the guy came in the evening, on 23rd, we were just there. That evening, 23rd, the brother came and told me that, you know, in-law, we are taking you home now. And we just met. To the village. To the village. Mommy and daddy want to see you. So I'm like, okay, why me? This is your brother who has been staying in Europe for, for years. How comes I'm not excited to see him? Why me? But no, he's, he's their son, but they want to see you. So the guy sent them photos and they're like, hey, mommy and daddy are waiting for this beautiful girl. We want to see you. I told them, no, you guys just go. I'll come later. Then they were like, no, we are not leaving you behind. We must go. So I'm coming to pick you guys by 10 p.m. It was 7 p.m. Then I said, okay. So when we went home, we reached that by 3. We checked in our hotel. Around 7, they are calling Okay. Where is Ruth? Where is Ruth? You want to see her? You want to see her? Where is she? So by around nine, we went. When we went to the village, even the mother was like screaming, eh, Ruth is coming. This is wonderful. So for me, I was laughing. I'm like, these people are very funny. Yeah. yeah? Not knowing that they had plans about me. They were planning to for me to help them out. So they were excited to see me. So we went, to we reached home, we were welcome. So I was told that this guy, his siblings were not eating from that home. What does that mean? That because he's a firstborn and they had just bought that land and constructed the house. So because he's the firstborn, his siblings cannot eat before he does. So we, we traditional. Yes, I don't know which kind of tradition is that because I'm also a low like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the moment that we sat like this, mm -hmm. The mother was like, hey, Ruth, come to the dining. Come and open a table for us. I'm like, okay, what does she mean? Mm -hmm. I was asking the guy that now you can just go and start eating. Then the rest will follow. I'm like, why me? Mm -hmm. That no, you are my wife and we are the firstborns, you know? So no problem. And for me, I was just going. I went. The father's like, hey, bite a bread and take a sip of tea. Then we follow you. I was also doing I was, whatever, they say. whatever they say because yeah mm -hmm. lunchtime the same hey bye to gali let us follow you i did the same and dinner the same so we went back to the hotel 7 a.m in the morning they called me again mm -hmm. come 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 we are building for you a house you have to run at night in the morning, oh, in the morning before. so i asked the guy okay which house that yeah you know they, they said they want to build for you a house so then I'm like, why didn't you tell me all these things? That no, it's nothing. There's no problem. Let us just go. So when we went, 
we found them standing somewhere like okay, okay come 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 and then they prayed a little and then they're like okay start digging the hole yes, yeah for the workers to to continue okay. and me i was just doing everything they were telling me when they were done again come come and put these poles in the hole for them to continue i was doing the same and i was cooking yeah doing everything at home we are eating together mm -hmm. i didn't know that i was not supposed to do all these things did your husband know that you were not supposed to do this thing? I, I think he didn't know i don't know mm -hmm. i can't tell at that time you had now started being serious in the relationship you know the way these people are rushing yeah, me so for me i felt like okay maybe it's because you have a return ticket he's supposed to go back to work so, you're rushing so yes you. i didn't know mm -hmm. and at the same time them too they knew that when i do i do all these things i'm opening a way for the younger ones uh -huh. yes but no one told you that they didn't say anything mm -hmm. so after there mm -hmm. i asked him okay when are we going home uh, when are we going back to nairobi that yeah you know when the house is done then we enter mm -hmm. that is when we'll go back so how long does it take to complete this they 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 completed around uh, like a week yeah mm -hmm. so when the house was done that time they were telling me ah, you see your house is done i'm like okay yeah yeah so no problem mm -hmm. he came to me around 3 p.m that uh, mommy and daddy are saying we are going to your home tomorrow for introduction mm -hmm. that was the time my eyes opened like okay what was wrong with these people why my home why the rush i told them no 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 because i know the relationship i have with my mom yes. and she didn't know that i was there so i can't just call her and tell her okay. eh, people are coming and abcd i said no 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 you are not going to my home and then it was like why you don't want me maybe you have another man you want to take to your home why not me i told him no it's not about you you know i have to prepare i have to call them earlier like four days before that's what i used to see a lady will go alone inform the family then the guest will come when she's ready yeah. when everyone is ready so how can we just enter one car and go like that mm -hmm. we can't go then he was like okay me i won't say anything go and tell mommy and daddy at the balcony that you don't want to go so when i went i told the family i told the parents that ah, mommy and daddy you know i don't want people to know that i'm staying in china and my husband is staying in europe you know i don't want people to know about my life i'm a secretive person I always do my own things so they will be questioning me or you people you will tell them that uh, this guy is not staying in africa and mm -hmm. they'll be asking me so many questions so i don't want to go but uh, don't worry i have an auntie here in kisumu we'll just go with her to her place we mm -hmm. can go to her place then they said okay you are the one who knows better you know your family than we do it's good you're protecting our son mm -hmm. from witches i'm like yeah you never know maybe they're witches i don't know so i called my auntie and my auntie told me that okay you come and we organize how the guests will stay so i went and i told auntie you know what i don't want people to know anything because these people first of all they're rushing me yeah. the second thing i don't know this guy and my heart does not accept them so when we go to the village people will be asking me later that how is that guy doing how is the family you know and maybe i'm not going to be with him because i don't know anything about him maybe he's lying to me and he's still married i don't know at this point he didn't know he had another wife. i didn't know the white woman was there because they t she he told me that they separated many years oh. ago mm -hmm. so and he was telling me that he was there with the lady because of the papers so since I'm also flying a lot, I know these things. When you want to settle, you can marry a white person mm. or a white lady to get the papers. Yeah. So my auntie told me, don't worry. Introduction is nothing. If you don't want him later, you can kick him out. No problem. Mm. <laughs> so she called them and told them, tomorrow by, by 11, you should be in, in Kisumu town to my house. Then the next day they came we did introduction after the introduction immediately the next day when i went back to their home it's like they were waiting for me i was to finish something that i didn't know i was to sleep in this house with this guy yeah so they, they were like tell you that. that's what they told me with the moment i reached home they were like oh your house is done and you know what you must sleep in this house tonight 
no more hotel we already check out your things that are here no more hotels this is your house is done you have to sleep there then i said okay no problem so we used to leave them by nine that okay good night we are going so that's how we left then when we reached the compound the guy was like i want to tell you something but don't tell anybody okay mm -hmm. let us rush to the hotel in the morning very early in the morning we'll come back and pretend that we it's slept in this house mm -hmm. then i told him you know me i'm tired since i came from nairobi i've been working up and down when we went to my auntie's place i was the one working for you people cooking doing everything and tomorrow i'm going to nairobi so i'm tired i want to sleep i'm it's going to hey, i want to sleep with the kids i'm going to the kids bedroom and sleep then he told me that you know what don't tell mommy and daddy anything don't don't let them see you you can find a way to enter in that house but don't let them see you me i'm going back to the hotel then i said okay so i went i entered through the kitchen door and entered the bedroom and slept so in the mornings like they were waiting for his results like okay they have done it oh no yes so they saw him he was pretending like stretching that he is awake I'm, okay the mother was there looking at him like okay where is ruth that she's in the house oh this girl is clever eh? she's she's a very hard working lady you mean she has already woken up now she's making tea for us you know washing utensils that she slept there the mother was shocked what that yes she slept there so she came to call me like she wanted to beat me shouting why did you sleep in my house what is wrong with you you what? were supposed to okay because of course they expected you yes to. why didn't you sleep in your house i already constructed a house for you you are sleeping in my house so i'm like mom what's wrong what's wrong if i sleep here mm. that no, no 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 that is your house they could not tell me that you are supposed to finish this thing yeah so the father also heard about that and came hey ruth what is wrong why am i hearing that you do not sleep in your house then I told him, okay, you don't need to shout. Go and ask your son what he did last night. Mm -hmm. So when they go to him, why is Ruth saying that you are the one who has a problem? He started laughing. Then he was like, ah, how can I sleep in this ugly house? And I'm from Switzerland. And we are from abroad. We are mm -hmm. smart people. How can we sleep in this ugly house? Maybe there's a snake inside mm -hmm. and it's cold. So they were like, okay. The father was telling me, Ruth, you know what? Tonight you must sleep there. So I got mad. I told them, I'm leaving now. I'm going to Nairobi. My daughter is going to school. Mm. I'm leaving now. So they could not stop me. Yeah. And that's how we left. Mm. So when I came with my daughter, the guy remained back home. I didn't know that that time they st he stayed back home. They were telling him to forget about me. You're not a wife material. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he came after four days and he was to fly back. So when he flew back to Switzerland, I stayed also for a few days and went back to China. Mm -hmm. So for, from there, we were just communicating. And after the guy left, I could call the parents. They were not answering my calls. They were not re re replying my messages. So I just kept quiet. When I went back to China. I was trying to call them that, okay, I reach safe. I'm in China now. They were not answering my calls. So I asked the guy, okay, why is it that since we left home, your parents are not talking to me? He was like, leave them, don't mind them. I didn't know they were telling him to keep off me, that I've not finished whatever I was to go and finish. So after six months, no, that was January. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in June, I was coming back home. That was 2017. Mm -hmm. And I told him that, you know, the elections are coming. I want to stay home for like three months. I will leave the country after the elections in 2017 mm -hmm. so he told me that okay we'll meet back home i'm coming in july early july i want to come before elections too then he came when he came when he was planning to come his younger brother the last one could come to my house anyhow even the time i was not around he could just come so i sent him a message and i told him okay i'm around i'm back and your brother is coming also soon. Then he was asking me questions like, oh, really? When is he coming? What did he tell you? So I asked him, know. okay, oh, you guys are you not talking. You can ask him. I didn't know they were fighting already. Even the younger one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were fighting about the same issues. Their, their parents told them that I'm not a nice lady. 
because of rich, yes mm -hmm. so when he came i told him you know i told your brother you're coming soon but not not like today mm -hmm. no, i didn't tell him the date and he started shouting at me why did you talk why did you tell them you're not supposed to tell them i don't want those witches near us i'm like who are witches my parents and everybody those people are wizards they should not come near you i don't want them to see to, to get close to you if if anybody comes in your house chase i said no i cannot do that it's not a blessing to chase mm -hmm. someone imagine the next day the brother just came without calling me without message without nothing he just came so when he came i didn't know they were not talking when he came the other brother got mad and he left us and went he disappeared so he went downstairs after a few minutes i followed him okay before i followed him it's like this boy sent a message to the parents that george is here so they could call him every now and then and then the boy was like she's here the, eh, he's outside he's not talking he has not given me anything and he was trying to give me the phone i talked to, to talk daddy to then i said no 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 no. your father knows my number and since i left your home he never talked to me what does he want to tell me now i don't want to talk to him as well mm -hmm. then i went and looked for him because there were so many calls and when he came i told him okay i want you to finish with, the, with your brother and let him go to his house so that when they call him he will say that i'm in my house I don't like this kind of tension. I don't know what's going on. You are not talking to him. What is going on? He told me that don't mind. Don't mind these people. So he went to the bedroom. I followed him. And he gave me $6,000. 6,000 shillings. That Give that stupid boy. Tell him to get out of your house. And don't let him come back here. I told him no, 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 no. People will start talking, you know, mm -hmm. say, hey, Ruth took all the money, yeah, yeah, she gave us, it, yeah. hey, she gave us 6,000 only, she took the rest, A, B, C, D. I don't want someone to spoil my name, it's your brother. What I want you to do, take him, go with him anywhere. Maybe outside you can talk or I can excuse you guys, you talk, then later I can come mm -hmm. back. He told me that I don't want anything to do with those people. I just want him to go. Mm -hmm. So I told him, okay, you know what, just escort him. Yeah, just escort him. So he did the same. Then the next day, we were just sitting like this, watching a movie. And I received a phone call from a strange number. And the lady was like, she changed her voice. Hi, how are you? My name is Sylvia Oduor. Yeah, how are you doing? Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, I don't know Sylvia Oduor. Who is this? I am Mama George, okay. Which George? Mm -hmm. Then she's like, I mean George, I'm like, okay, uh, <laughs> I'm Mama George. Today you don't know me. Ah. I'm like, ah, mom, is that you? Mm -hmm. But yeah. Okay, what is it? I was just saying hello. Remember they were not talking to me. So I'm like, okay, why is she Very calling? The boy told them that, that he's around. Mm -hmm. So when she hung up, I just look at him and I told him that, you know, you see, your mother knows you're in my house. You have to call your mom. Just, even if you're not going, just make a phone call. Say, mommy, I came to Kenya, you know. I'm busy. I'm staying here for a few days. I'll go back in, on Saturday. That's enough. He said, never. Mm -hmm. I'll never do that. So I couldn't force him because he knows his family than me. Yeah. The way I know my family than him. So I don't know what's going on. And um, on Thursday... I became sick from around four. I became so sick. My head was aching. I could scream. I was very sick and I was rushed to the hospital. And when we reached there, they did some tests. There was nothing found. So I was injected diclofenac, just painkillers, and I was given some tabs. So after every two hours, I could take the tabs. If I don't take, I would just be screaming, crying, I'm sick. So we went like that. Even on Sir Friday, I was taken back to the hospital for injections. And he was supposed to leave on Saturday. So he was asking me to change the ticket. I told him, no, don't change. Just just go. I'll be okay. Mm. So he went on Saturday. After he went on Saturday, 
he called me on Sunday on his arrival and told me that I live so safe but uh, I know you are very sick and don't hide anything from me you are very sick the way I left you there's no change yeah and I know what is happening to you my parents are killing you they are blaming you for me not going to see them they're saying you use your juju you don't want me to see them and they hate you and they hate you since and it was like do you know the reason why i didn't go to them because they are calling you a bitch uh, you don't want to listen to them they wanted you to stay in the village with them and i said no they wanted to control your li your life and you refused to to be controlled they wanted to 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 use you in so many things and i could not allow them so that's the reason why they hate you and they wanted you to die you sleeping in that house you are going to die so the, that's why i refused and went to the hotel mm -hmm. i didn't want us to sleep in that house if we would have slept together from there you are going to die or your life was going to be miserable it was a sacrifice that you're going to do and i couldn't let them hurt you so if you're sick like that tomorrow please tell me I will ins I've, I've already insulted them i'm still insulting them and i told them i'll book my flight and come and shoot them with my gun so just tell me everything so for me i was shocked i was like okay maybe it's right because what's happening to me yeah, yes so after there the mom called me that uh Rob, my daughter are you sick i'm really praying for you mommy okay i'm praying for you don't worry you'll be okay mm -hmm. then i said mommy okay thank you so then from after she called me i could not even sleep for three days i wasn't sleeping after she called after she hung up i asked for my brother to give me a porridge and i drank the porridge and i felt asleep from four i slept up to like seven so then at night i just slept nicely i just slept well though i was still sick but i wasn't screaming again mm -hmm. very early in the morning at six she called me are you okay now you see i prayed for you you are now okay. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, I was okay. I wasn't sick again. Mm -hmm. I even woke up at that time and washed clothes here. Yeah. And immediately she hung up. The son called me. No, you have Yes. Mm -hmm. You see now, mommy, you're okay? I told you mommy was killing you. So she had to undo something. Yeah, to make sure that you're okay. I threatened to kill them. And I want to tell you this thing. Just keep off them. Mm -hmm. Those witches, keep off them. Now you understand the reason why I didn't want to go to them. They are witches. They don't want anything good for anybody. So just stay away. Mm -hmm. So I stayed. And um, after a few months, mm -hmm. I went back after the elections. I, I, yeah, mm -hmm. around October, I went back to China. So one time, no, before that, the brother called me to insult me. After I became okay, the brother called me to insult me. The way I'm a witch, the way I'm what, I'm eating their brother's money. Mm -hmm. So he was insulting me. The sister from Germany was also insulting me, sending me skeletons, rest in peace, Ruth. Skeletons and I hope like the skeletons of our, skeleton. yes, yes. What? She was downloading, I don't know from where. I hope you are not, you are not that stupid to be buried in my land. The land I bought for my, my parents. I heard that they constructed a very fake house for you there. Mm -hmm. If you die, you should not be buried there. Just go to Langaton or anywhere. Uh, yeah, she was really giving me big insults. So I blocked her. When I blocked her, she sent the brother to insult me. So I called the father. I told the father after three days. Yeah, I told him, uh, your children are insulting me. And I'm going to arrest your son. I cannot reach to Germany. But this son, I'm going to arrest him. And I'm recording him. I have recorded all the insults and I'm going to arrest him. And the father was like, you will know that I'm also a former police. Yeah, you are a bad woman. You are taking my son. Then I'm like, okay, daddy, what do you mean? That, yeah, yeah, you will see. I said, okay, I will arrest him. So later I told the guy, your family are insulted. I could send him whenever the lady was sending me. Sending the screenshots yeah, and the photos. I'm forwarding everything. And I was seeing that he was giving me blue ticks too. So I was oh, so like... now the communication is not... Working. Yeah, I was, I was like, okay, what's going on? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, let me not bother him. I don't know what is going through there. Let me just leave him. Mm -hmm. So after there, I went back to China. 
and i asked him okay why is it that i was telling you about everything that was going on down there you didn't care he told me the truth i'm really sorry these people are threatening to tell the white lady about you and you know what will happen after that i'll be shot or deported or my life will end and now what will we do so that's when i'm like okay are you you have still a wife yes you have a white lady erica is still there then he was begging me please don't leave me mommy and daddy deceived me you know they were telling me that uh, you are a low lady so you can be used a white woman doesn't know anything about the culture yeah all these things were done by my parents please just stay don't leave me i'm like okay so why didn't you tell me before yes at least i'll know how to handle things i wasn't going to go there but i would stay with you that no you know you see the reason why i couldn't build a house because i didn't have a low daddy so at least you are there eh? i could do other things and they were telling me that you'll be representing me in kenya like when they need a first one you can be going mm -hmm. that was their plan but you see now i fought with them we are not friends because of that and i said okay no problem my daddy was a polygamous so i don't have a problem i was just deceiving him but in my heart i was like no this is not a place to stay it's not my portion to go to someone's husband so later um they kept on sending messages when i did when i blocked this one they're using the other number i told him please i want you to keep off my life this is too much for me just leave me at this point were you still in a relationship with this man yeah i was i was still there but we were just talking but in my heart, I was saying, you know, this is a terrible family to mm. go to. Yeah, mm. it's a terrible... Because if someone tells you that my parents are witches, what will you do with the person? Yeah. Of course, you can't stay. Mm -hmm. Whether it's a nice person, but at the same... Is that blood? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they can do anything. And these people will be fighting me like forever. Of course. Yes. So at what point did you decide enough is enough? I'm walking out of this marriage. That okay. time. That was the time I told him like, I'm, I'm done. Yeah, we can just be friends, but I don't want anything like a relationship with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just keep off me. So what happened? After? So after there, he kept he kept quiet. So when he was quiet, like he was giving me blue ticks and me too, I just, I just kept quiet. Mm -hmm. So after three months, I started having nightmares. I could dream about pythons. Yeah, I was dreaming about the things that I couldn't understand. I started having wet dreams, yeah. Mm -hmm. I could see the image of a person coming, but I couldn't see like who. And every morning when I could wake up, I could find that I've missed, yeah. So this thing continued. And whenever I could have this kind of dream, I could feel like I need to continue. Oh. Yeah, my body was always hot, very hot. So I felt like, okay, I need to continue. And that's how I started masturbating. Yeah, that's when I started masturbation. And this thing continued. Even on the road when I was walking, I could feel like I need to hide somewhere and do it. Oh, really? Yes. Were you in Kenya at this time? No, I was in China. Mm -hmm. I was in China and I was uh, I was alone. So at the same time when I could have stress, when I think about my daughter or whatever I'm going through in China, that was where I was finishing my stress. Yeah. So this thing continued. And then at the same time, I started hating men. I could just fight with anyone who comes across. Mm -hmm. Like maybe the person will approach you. I would just tell you like, keep off me. Yeah. You know a man will say, okay, when you approach the lady for the first time, she will say no. The yeah. second the time she will say yes. So for me, I would tell someone, just keep off. Because I knew the kind of a person I was. Mm -hmm. And the way I lived my life at the same time, I grew up with anger because no one was nice to me. Mm. Yeah, um... I was suffering from the childhood trauma at the same time. Mm. I was like, okay, my mama never loved me. I never grew up with love. So, like, why do I care? The person whom I thought that was going to take care of me, the father of my kid also did the same thing. I'm like, okay, the world is cruel to me. So, there was a time, even girls, ladies, people are just using me. Okay, I'm not, uh, I'm not bragging, but I know myself. I'm a very generous person. I'm mm -hmm. kind-hearted. So people could take an advantage of my kindness. Mm -hmm. I can organize a job for you. I can help you with anything. Then later, the way you'll turn against me. So I could cry. I'm like, what is happening? Why are people so heartless? 
so there was a time i sat like this i was asking myself these questions and mm -hmm. i could i had a voice telling me that if someone annoys you just beat the person so imagine i used to beat people like when you hurt me i'll just beat you mm -hmm. and i was very strong mm -hmm. and at the same time with men too you would beat me oh yes i would tell you just keep off me don't don't compliment me don't say hey, you have a nice finger beautiful i'm like shut up stop doing that so if someone doesn't listen that's when i'll end up like and i was very strong so it's like all the foreigners were there like the kenyans they knew me they knew me they were like yeah don't, don't try that girl <laughs> <laughs> don't try that girl and so i used to stay alone in another city mm -hmm. far from blacks like when i'm walking on the road they will they will notice oh there's a black there i love to stay there alone because at the same time when i would stay with people I couldn't do this thing. Ah. Yeah. So I would prefer to stay on my yes. own. Yes. How long did you struggle with this? For four years. Yeah. How bad was it then? It was really, really bad because I could do it like six times a day. Were yeah. You feeling guilty? Of course I do. And sometimes like in China, we're not going to church. So most of the time I could do it like on a Sunday. That's when I'll realize or later, like, oh my God, it's a Sunday. Like, why? So a time came when I was very sick. I could get sick. I could get sick every now and then. So I remember there was a time I was uh, on YouTube. I was watching uh, the effects of masturbation. I saw 21 effects of masturbation. Okay, uh, that means. Yes. Uh -huh. And... Um, at the same time, I, I was like, something was controlling me. Yeah? So, somewhere, a place where I was going to get help, something was stopping me to not to go. Mm -hmm. So, I saw like back pain, headache, tiredness, anger, um, pimples. Then, it's like something pressed, pushed my hand to press the pause button and I slept. So, when I slept... I didn't even pray that time. And imagine the, the time I was doing this thing, at the same time I was praying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was praying. I'm like, God, just help me. And the time I'm praying, something is pushing me like, finish praying faster. And immediately when I'm done, yeah, immediately when I'm done, I'll continue. So at the same time, when a man could approach me, I will tell the person, you know, I'm not married to you, so just marry me first. Sometimes I could be allowed something like, I was being controlled. I could be allowed. Okay, okay date. But mistreat the person. Just mistreat the person. Yes. So I would agree maybe to go with you for dinner or lunch or anything. But I will, I will hurt you. When we're at the restaurant, I will seek attention. Then I will be like waking up. Maybe the, the man will start like, oh, you know. I will just hit the table like, take me home. I'm leaving. Take me home. So the man will get mad. Yeah. I would, I, and when the guy is mad, I will start laughing. So, mm -hmm. everyone knew me. Some were calling me. Ah, see the stone face is passing there. And they were afraid of me. They would call me stone. Yes. No, really. Because they, <laughs> <laughs> they all could look at them. Like when you call me, you will apologize. Mm -hmm. There's an eye which was looking at them. Just the way you can, you can get a woman with another man like you get your wife with mm -hmm. a man mm -hmm. so i was like a married woman and maybe my husband will catch me with another man so it, because this one is a spirit it, it could not find a man directly it could find a fight a man through me that was what was happening Jeez. yes so such a person will tell you that i'll never come to you i'm done because later i'll start laughing i'm calling like oh let us go for dinner or anything. The man will be like, you, Ruth, I know you. <laughs> I can never, I can never come close to you. Then I will laugh, I will laugh. I'm like, I'm a winner, yeah. I didn't know that at the same time I was losing. Yeah, I've lost a lot. But God is grateful. Yeah, God is, God is great. And um, after there, I, I, I'm a fan of Tuko Talks, yeah, 
so the time i was born like when there was corona i went in 2019 mm. i got stuck there since 2019 until last year mm. so in 2019 when, when we were stuck there was no job there was nothing i could just be watching tuko to tuko shows and i remember one time at three i saw there like it was written i slept with demons the story of any katoti mm. so i'm like okay this is interesting today yeah. let me watch and i felt asleep something that never happened yeah this thing didn't want me to get help from anywhere because when i started the story i'm like okay this is me yeah. this so girl is talking like this. yeah this is me so i slept so when i wake up by eight in the morning i was like okay i was watching something mm -hmm. i went and washed my face it was winter it was even snowing outside mm -hmm. it was very cold and i sat down and i'm like okay i want to finish watching this mm -hmm. thing so i watched the whole thing so when i was watching the whole story i was just crying i was just crying mm -hmm. then from there i prayed and i slept again so at the same time when i was praying i could hear a voice telling me that ah because I said that, okay, she delivered herself. I can do the same. Mm -hmm. So I had a voice telling me that she delivered herself where? In Kenya, not in China. Yeah. So wait until ah. you go to China, to Kenya. Mm -hmm. That's when you can. But for now, just continue with your life. So I slept. I woke up uh, at night. And at the same time, I wasn't eating. By then, I was very weak. I wasn't eating. I didn't have appetite. I didn't have blood. There was a time I was very sick, and the doctor told me that I have low blood pressure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wasn't taking water. I wasn't eating. The only thing I could eat sometimes was fruits. Yeah. So, when I woke up, I ate the fruits. I took shower. started watching movies, passing time. Then I remember after... Uh, after two days, mm -hmm. it was daytime, around midday. Mm -hmm. So, I was sleeping because I could sleep from morning. Since I was stressed, I, by the way, I'm stressed, I sleep a lot. Mm -hmm. So, I could sleep from morning, then I would sleep the whole day. Yeah, from there, from four. I could sleep from four, then sleep yeah. the whole day. Yeah. So, around midday, my head was heavy, I was just sleeping. And I felt like something was waking me up. So I heard a voice telling me, Ruth, wake up and pray. Then I was still sleeping. I thought I was dreaming. Ruth, wake up and pray. And the third time, mm -hmm. the, boy, the voice shouted. So I believe that this voice was God's voice. Yeah. I said, wake up and pray. And I got so frightened. I was even shaking. So when I looked at myself... I was like half naked. At the same time, I used to sleep. I was dressing sexy. Whenever I was sleeping, I was dressing sexy. Too sexy. Yeah, every day. So first I looked at myself. I'm like, okay. How did I dress like this? Like, Am I supposed to pray like this? So I took the bed sheet and covered myself like a Muslim. And went on my knees. And Chinese people... The way they constructed their houses, the wall is not like this one. It's like a, a wood in the middle. Mm -hmm. So when we are talking like now, they will hear your voice That's on the sad. other side. And they, they were always saying that uh, African people are shouting, they're making noise when, when we are talking. So even a phone call, when you're making a phone call, they will knock like the wall. Eh, you're making Keep noise. Quiet. Keep quiet. So first I ask God, okay, what if I pray and they will... They'll interrupt me. Then I'm like, okay, you woke me up to pray. Let me pray. The way I prayed, I was shouting. I was crying. And I was asking God to please deliver me. Just deliver me. If you deliver that lady, you can also deliver me. Yeah, I'm your, I'm your servant. Mm -hmm. Yes. I know I've abandoned you. But please just have mercy and deliver me. So I really cried for God. That prayer took like 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. I can remember everything and I fainted like I collapsed I, f I fell down mm -hmm. on the floor mm -hmm. and when I fell down I it's like I slept 
Then I woke up again because the floor, the floor was very cold. So when I woke up, I looked at myself and I felt so light. Wow. Yes, and I messed the floor. I had vomited a lot on the floor. So from there I went and took the shower and came back and prayed again to thank Almighty God for deliverance. You felt like you've been delivered? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I told Almighty God that, okay, this prayer will go for seven days. But today I, I believe that this first prayer has worked. You have delivered me. But I'm going to pray like this for seven days. Did the urge come back at this point? N no. Wow. In fact, if I took shower, I felt so hungry. I needed something to eat. Mm -hmm. I went out and bought a lot of food and cooked. And I ate a lot. Mm -hmm. Then went back again to bed. Then at night again I prayed and slept nicely. I didn't feel like my body was never hot again. The next day I prayed again. I didn't vomit much. So I went like that for seven days. Mm -hmm. And the Hajj went just like that. Wow. So I was in another city in northern China. Mm -hmm. And there's a city called Guangzhou. That's where you'll find blacks. All foreigners are there. It's a business place. Mm -hmm. So people used to fear me. Some even used to hate me. You know? And... Uh, I mean to them, I mean. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Because, you know, for a man, you tell a man no. He's just no to a man and he wants you. Of course, he'll, he'll be angry with you or insult you or anything. Mm. So this house, we were staying like five people. I had my own bedroom. And these guys had their rooms. So we were staying five people, four men and me. So I went there. I was going for my visa. So, and then I told Almighty God that, okay, I'm going that side. And I know that I have a lot of enemies. But when I reach there, I want them to see you in me. I don't want them to see another creature in me. I just want them to see you in me. I want to be loved. I want to sit with my fellow Kenyans. I want to be normal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I went at night. I reached there. They knew that I have my own key. I'll go to my room. I went to my room. I slept. So in the morning, one Congolese guy saw me. And he greeted me. And I, I yes, answered I him. And I was just smiling. Then I was like, wow. Changed. You've changed. I'm like, oh, really? That, yeah. And you look more beautiful. Wow. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to hear that word. You're beautiful. I didn't want to hear it. <laughs> yeah. Then I'm like, oh, thank you. So I was like, oh, you're saying thank you. When I say you're beautiful, I'm like, yeah. Well, you want me not to say thank you? What do you want me to say? <laughs> that, eh. So I wanted him to tell me more because I was blind by then. Mm -hmm. How was I? Yeah. And he was like, you are like a lion. Yeah. You are so harsh. No one could come close to you. Then I say, thank you, Jesus. Then he was like, okay, why are you saying thank you, Jesus? I'm not. It's nothing. It's nothing. Then from there, later in the day, I took a shower. I went now to the place where Kenyans used to sit, chatting at the cargo place. So another guy saw me. Oh, this come. He's giving me a chair. Sit. Mm -hmm. Have some juice. Yes, have some juice. Sit with us. Mm. The people were not even talking to me. I'm like, God, you really did it to me. You did it for me. You delivered my life. I'm a normal person. So that was how my life changed. Did anyone know that you, you've been struggling with this? Like me? No, I couldn't share. I couldn't share. I was feeling embarrassed. I was feeling dirty. Yeah, I was feeling, okay, someone will judge me. Yes. Mm -hmm. mm. So, and as we conclude, you probably have a message uh, to a Kenyan or uh, you know someone out there who's struggling with this problem of masturbation. Mm. What advice do you have? The only yes. advice I can have for them is to pray, because I delivered myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can deliver yourself. It's only you have to trust in the Lord. God is there. People don't know that God is there. God is there, and He listens. Yeah. yeah. And he wants someone with pure heart, you know. So the way I prayed, like, okay, so many people had looked for me. The only thing I was telling them was just, just pray. Mm -hmm. Because some of them were calling me, pray for us. You are delivered. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pray for us. I would tell a person, like when you're struggling with something, you want to achieve your goal. Mm -hmm. You know the sweat, you know the struggle, you know the pain. You know, mm -hmm. that is the way you are supposed to pray. Because when I pray for you, there is no struggle. You can struggle through fasting. You can struggle through Kesha. Stay all night without praying. Yeah. 
So when you know this kind of struggle, next time you not allow the enemy to play with you. You say that if you know where I came from, the way I fought to be here today, you cannot mess with my life. So I would just advise people to keep on praying. Pray without ceasing mm -hmm. because God is there. God is like a, a father. Like you, you know that your child needs this cloth or anything. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you'll wait for the person to ask, give me. You see, like there was a blind guy. Mm -hmm. Jesus knew he was blind. But yet, Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for me? What do you want me to do for you? So it is you to tell God what you want. Because he would have, God, Jesus would have given him everything. Maybe he didn't want to, to, to see. Maybe he wanted a car. Maybe he wanted money. Maybe he wanted... God would give him anything. But the moment that he said, I want to see again. Then he saw again. So at the same time with God, like now we human beings, you have, be a persistent when praying and resist the enemy. That is the only thing I can advise people out there. Awesome. Yes. And Ruth, because you are, uh, you are a musician. Yes. You tell us where we'll find some of your songs. Oh, yes. I have a YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Yes. My name is Ruth Midund on YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Yes. What else do we see Ruth doing in the coming future? Um, I want to work for God. Yeah, I want to work for God. Because if it wasn't this God, life was so tough for me. I would have committed suicide. Mm -hmm. Yes. But God kept me here to be alive, to be a reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he gave, he gave me here for a reason. To live and testify for the goodness mm -hmm. of everything that he has done in my life. Yes. So at the same time, I'm a business lady. Mm -hmm. Tell us what you said. <laughs> yes, I have a Facebook page. Mm -hmm. It's Arude Collection. It's Arude, Co Arude Collections. Mm -hmm. So I have shoes and clothes. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, I supply phone accessories. Mm -hmm. And I'm a, I'm a mobile masseuse. Yeah. I have my bed. Mm -hmm. I can come anywhere. Yes. When you call me, I can just come anywhere you are. Mm -hmm. Yes. How can these people find you if they need your services or your products? Yes, I have a, I have a phone number. I can provide yes, my phone number. My phone number is 0729 222 Say it again. 0729 222 Perfect. Yes. All right. Well, thank you so much for opening up your heart, even your lovely home. Uh, <laughs> you're most welcome. <laughs> and sharing your story. Yes. And thank you so much for coming. You're super welcome. Okay. And we appreciate the fact that you've actually just walk the journey of deliverance and you're here to testify that God actually lives. Yes. And he has delivered you from yeah. the struggles you've been through. Yes. And we hope to see you going higher and higher. Amen. Yes. Amen. Keep producing more songs. We love how you sing. Yes. Know. Yes. I'm working on my videos mm -hmm. that yeah, very so soon. Yeah, but my songs are on YouTube. Awesome. The audios. Okay. You yes. share some of the songs with us, your favorite ones, and then you can Oh, yes. Yes. Right. Well, thank you so much for staying with us till the end of the show. That has been the story of Ruth Medundo. My name is Yvonne Kawera. Till next time, keep it local.